Hi, everyone, and good morning. Um, let me start by talking a little bit about Colombia before we flip into slides. Most of you probably watch Narcos. Most of you think, wow, Colombia must be a very scary place to be. But the reality of Colombia is this. From 2000 until today, it's a vastly changed place. Security has gone from a serious problem where no exploration companies would dare to venture to a country that is building its future GDP growth first on oil, it went from no production to over a million barrels a day, and next in precious metals. Okay. In addition, there is a large established mining industry already in place in Colombia. This is a question I get. Aren't you going into an emerging market? It's not emerging in this regard. It's the tenth largest producer of coal in the world. The largest open pit coal mine on planet Earth operates in Colombia, and it's owned by some monster companies. Glencore Strata is in the country, BHP Billiton, who we all know, Anglo-Americans in the country, Drummond, etc. So the mining industry is old, established. Gold is a small industry in the country right now. There's only two mines that produce at 100,000 ounces a year or more. I'm here to tell you about our Baritica project. Okay, it literally is a mountain of gold. That is what it was called in the 1700s by the Spanish when they invaded. And we are the first company to put modern exploration towards it. It is a very large geological system. There will be a lot more ounces here. As I'll show you in a minute, we already have a large resource and now mineral reserves. But the comparables for this type of deposit can grow to, to beasts, over 30 million ounces namely Porgra in Papua New Guinea, which is Barrick and now Zijin Mining in Joint Venture, and Penasquito of Gold Corp, uh, which is in Mexico. Um, vein systems that have enormous vertical extents as well as lateral strike. Okay, last week we put out a, sorry, last week we put out a feasibility study. It's the first one on the project. I'll walk you through that. But long story short, this is a lowest quartile project both in terms of cost to produce the gold and in terms of free cash flow that we'll spit out. Permitting, you know, we're in the middle of permitting and everyone that's a shareholder here knows it is noisy. Okay, for those that have invested in Latin America, it happens to everybody. But there is one key thing you need to take away uh, from me telling you that we're going to get it permitted. We are operating in a right-wing government country that has been right-wing pro-business for 45 years. We have full support from the national government of Colombia. We also have full support from the state level government and the municipal level government. Everyone is pushing this project forward. It is noisy, it's Latin America, it's not Canada, but we will get there. We heard the same thing previously on permitting with um, Tahoe with Escobar mine in Guatemala, all the detractors said they will not get a permit in Guatemala and now it's the top three lowest cost silver producing mines on the planet. We heard the same thing about Torex in Mexico. Oh, they have a security problem there. Guerrero State's very rough right now. They'll never build the mine there and they announced they poured gold last quarter. Um, we're the next one to get a permit. Unfortunately, we're carrying a lot of weight on our back as everyone here knows, but it's coming. Okay, what makes Baritica great? This is a picture of the topography of where we're dealing with. It's mountainous. Okay, this is not easy for exploration, as everyone here can imagine, because we have to drill holes into a, a steep mountain slope. However, you're looking at the two gold colors. You see the word Vetasur Uragua. Those are two side-by-side -side vein systems. Those are deposits. And you see the blue, the teal blue lines. Those are the commercial development that we already permitted and put in place to access underground. The advantage here is this for mining. We will be mining the top of the ore body, the top half, and initially, and all of that is gravity assisted. It will fall down naturally. Managing water in an underground mine is always a conundrum for people. When it flows with gravity, it becomes a non-issue. And everything will go out into that valley that you see there on the right, which is the central processing facility that we will build. Okay, let's look at it more closely. So, what do we have? Well, we've got a mineral resource estimate that totals in all categories, which are measured, indicated, and inferred almost 10 million ounces of gold. And I am comfortable telling you that I, I believe this will grow well bigger than that. We already see it in our drilling, which is the image on the left. The image on the right is the feasibility study. There's the location of those mineable reserves. You can see them outlined in the red box on the left, and that's where they are. They're all high up in the system. The 
gold colors that extend down of the two vein systems, that is from drilling. That is the outlines of our drilling. So, okay, what did our feasibility study show? I mentioned it's a, it's a robust project. Well, let's, let's understand the, the metrics and then we'll look at the economics. So it's a 14 year mine life. CapEx is around $390 million. We will produce at over 250,000 ounces per, per year. Uh, for the life of mine with more robust production of 282,000 ounces per annum in the first five years. Low cost. Total cash cost per ounce of $411 an ounce. Total all-in sustaining costs, which includes your total cash cost plus your sustaining capital of around $500. And all of those costs plus the construction cost per ounce, the capex of $600 per ounce. So this is right at the bottom of the lowest quartile of cost projects in the world and will withstand just about any gold environment. Economics. Let's look at the base case. We use $1,200 gold and $15 silver. The net present value at a 5% discount rate is about $860 million. All of these figures are US dollars and all of these are post-tax. The internal rate of return is over 30%, very robust, payback very quick at 2.3 years. And for what it's worth, with the exchange rate assumption of the Colombian peso to US dollar we used is about 20% weaker than Colombian peso today, meaning there's, there's upside in this study just on exchange rate alone. Okay, what's the upside? So we see Uragua, we see Vetasur on this map. Those are our two deposits, our two reserves, and those are ones that will grow to plus 15 million ounces. But we have outlined four other vein systems. You'll see this gray shaded area, that is what we call an intrusion, and these are all vein systems popping off of the intrusion, which is the heat source at depth, likely a porphyry, and we've identified other ones. We have Laurel, San Augustine, and most importantly, Pinguro and Obispo. Okay, why I say most importantly, both of those systems we've, we've traced along surface, each for about 10 kilometers vein systems, and there's intersecting vein systems cross-crossing each other. That is where your best chance is going to be to find uh, robust mineralization and lots of it, and we would like to be drilling those in the second half of the year. You can see some of the high-grade samples we've taken from surface, including soil samples at up to 188 grams per ton. You will only find something that high in gold and soil if you're literally sitting on a mineralized structure. We're cheap. I mean, th th that's simple as this. This is not my opinion. This is consensus analyst opinion. We have eight analysts that cover continental gold uh, in uh, the Canadian firms. We're trading at 0.23 price PNAV multiple, okay? This is to do with the disbelief that we won't permit, okay? I assure you here we will permit this project, okay? I'm not in this business to fail, and we've got the team to do it, and the valuation increase will come with success in that regard. Lastly, we're all here talking about the cycle. I, I love this chart because this is a very long-term chart of the TSX venture. This removes all the opinions, all the noise, and it tells you where we are in the cycle. We are at the point of inflection. In fact, I'm convinced it's already turned up. This is going back to 1983, so we're combining the TSX venture with the uh, Vancouver Stock Exchange, the old Vancouver Stock Exchange, and this is a compelling chart, so let's enjoy the ride and see where this goes. In my last 40 seconds, I just want to talk about the people behind Continental Gold. As everybody knows, people make projects work. Okay, so let's start with the bottom right mine builders. Okay, Don Gray is our COO. Don Gray is the individual that moved to Guatemala and built Escobal for Tahoe, which I mentioned is one of the top three silver producers in the world now. He was convinced on our Baritica project of the upside, quit Tahoe and came to us. We convinced him. Colombian operators, okay, this is important. When you're in another country, you need people that have had success. Leon Teicher, the executive chairman of the company, was the CEO of Cerrojón Coal. That is what I mentioned earlier, the largest open pit coal mine in the world. Okay, and it is also the flagship operation in Colombia in terms of how you run a business from a social standpoint and an environmental standpoint. Um, lastly, I'll mention our, our geological department. Everyone's talking about the Integra Gold Challenge, which is coming up at PDAC. I'm sure some of you heard of that. Our Vic Wall, who's been my partner for a long time, is the winner, was the winner of the Gold Corp Challenge, the original one in 2001. He modeled over five million ounces 
underground at Red Lake for Gold Corp, all of which has now been mined or in the process of being mined. And with that said, I thank you. We'll be at our booth for any questions that anybody might have. Thank you.